guys, uh, Glenn Trayer here, Mountain Man Journals, Trail Wilderness. Um, just thought I'd have some orders and stuff that I gotta fill here out in the smithy, and uh, I'm gonna be building some stuff today. A um, couple strikers, flint and steel strikers, and uh, some things like that. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I build my flint and steel strikers. Um, just uh, give you a little. I guess look into how I do it. Um, there's many different ways of doing it. Uh, different guys do it different ways. Um, I thought too I'd give you a little insight uh, on something here. I'm going to be doing a uh, blacksmithing um, little video series and stuff um, that you can you can get involved with there. Um, so I just thought I'd give you a little heads up. I'm by no means some master blacksmith or anything like that, but uh, thought I'd show you some things that might be handy around your homestead and doing all kinds of stuff. So uh, I guess I know I've been away for a while. Uh, this summer, this whole year's been really, really hectic. Um, I haven't just haven't had time to make any videos, and I apologize for that. But uh, it's just uh, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, you know, to make things go. But I um, hope everybody's doing well out there. And uh, with that being said, um, I'm going to get things set up here and we'll get rolling on one of these strikers. So, see you in a bit. Alright guys, so I thought I'd show you what um, <clears throat> what I start out with. Um, I'm using a propane forge. Uh, for one, I have trouble finding good coal here in Idaho. Um, I mean, I can order it on the internet and stuff like that, but it's just sometimes it can be more of a hassle. And if you're doing a quick job, um, something you're not going to be in the smithy all day long um, to fire up a coal forge for you know like three hours you know two hours it's just sometimes not worth it so it's nice having the propane forge there are advantages and disadvantages to a propane forge but um, you know like getting your it's very very hard unless you're doing real thin metal um, to get your propane up hot enough to forge weld um, stuff like that um, you know there's just like I said there's advantages and disadvantages but anyways I'm not going into that right now um, I'll go into that on uh, my series um, but uh, what I start out with is a piece of half inch rebar and um, that's just you can buy this at Home Depot, Lowe's Ace Hardware, a lot of the hardware stores and stuff, um, you can buy this half inch rebar just about anywhere. Um, you don't have to get it from a steel company or anything like that. Um, what I do, I like to have my pieces, if I can, you know, longer to start with as I'm working, um, working them down, and then, um, then I'll cut them off after I have it in my length and everything that I need. Uh, just kind of makes it easier to hold on to. Um, you know, you're not holding on to your tongs and trying to keep them tight. You just hold on to the, the bar and hammer, you know. Um, just kind of makes it easier sometimes. So this is all I'm using. Um, like I said, half inch rebar. That's it. And then uh, I'll show you how I hammer it down and everything. We're going to put this in the forge. Um, I've got a piece of inch by inch steel in there now. Um, it's not real hot. I turn this up real loud, it makes a lot of noise and you won't be able to hear me hit <laughs> like that. Um, what I do when it's cold out, now this isn't real, real hot, but I take that and uh, put it in my forge, heat that up, then I, I uh, lay that in my anvil. 
I'll lay that on my anvil there um, to heat that up. Um, you can al already see I busted the front of this off. I don't think it was because it was too cold. Uh, I just think this anvil is really, really, really old. This was my wife's great grandfather's. So, you know, it's it's pretty old. Um, but it's better if you can heat your anvil up like this, at least a little bit, um, and uh, get uh, get that warm. So you're, it's a little a little easier on your steel. It won't crack as easy and chip and stuff like that. So I just thought I'd show you that little trick. Sorry about the mess in here. Um, I haven't been in here to clean it up, <laughs> and it's in dire need of cleaning. And uh, I only have a limited amount of space. So all right, well I'm gonna let this heat up and then be right back with you. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to try and zoom in here. Uh, you won't see me very well, but that's probably better at it anyhow. Um, but uh, I'm going to try showing you here, getting this right where I can show you. Um, our steel's hot. Let's see if I can bring that up. Can't really see it real well, but you'll see, see it here in a second. Um, just show you where I start out at. Okay, here's our steel, nice and hot. I take about five, about five inches of uh, re, about five inches of rebar. Square it off a little bit if you can see that. Hopefully you can see see this okay and see everything that's going on. I'm um, just starting there. I'm gonna throw it back in the forge and heat it up again. Yeah, hopefully you can see all this okay. Um, see what I'm doing. And uh, I'll let that heat back up and do a little pounding on it and then I'll show you uh, where I stop and where I pick up the next section. Alright guys, so I thought I'd show you this here, um, how I do this. Now you can eyeball this uh, if you want. It's not a big deal. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's better if you can get it as close as you can. It comes out more even. Um, what I do is I take my tape and I measure from my edge out inch and a half. Take my soapstone and uh, make a mark. See that soapstone? I'm not marking on there. It'll actually wipe right off. So I'm not worried about marking up my anvil or anything. Um, so I know I have an inch and a half from my edge to here to that line. Um, this is a three, three and a half inch uh, anvil plate there. So what I'm gonna do, our steel is up. I've got it squared off. Um, I like this to be five inches long on this style. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, come about an inch and a half, and we're gonna start hitting down gonna hit down on that. You can start to see um, how that's looking. Um, hopefully. I don't know. There. Um, that's going to be the part that comes up around that you hold on to. Let's 
So I'm going to take that and I'm going to hammer that out and uh, I'll show you uh, when I got it all drawn out how I like it um, as far as my uh, thickness and, and everything like that. I'll show you that then.